Hi, hello, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I think I'm finally getting the hang of this a little bit. Uh, thank you to those of you who have stuck with me through the rockier parts of scheduling things. Um, welcome back to the awesome peeps who are returning. And for those of you that are new here, hi, I'm Sky. I draw and I talk about stuff usually pertaining to art, media, and queer topics. Sit back have a listen, and if you feel like hitting that subscribe button or dropping an emoji in the comments to feed the algorithm gods, it would be super cool of you. Today we are drawing a fan art piece of Veracica Mayday from Hell of a Boss. This was my Patreon fan art in, I think, June of last year. Uh, if you want to vote on who I draw next, see the spicy, not safe for work version of this one, along with other goodies, or just support me and my cat, you can subscribe to my Patreon with the link in the description. So today's topic might be a little bit messy, if only because I have some trouble organizing my thoughts on it because I have a lot of them. Um, so today we are talking about traditional art school and my personal experience with this. Um, this is kind of turning into a little bit of a series uh, in my future scripts about art school experiences and art education in general. Um, we're gonna pretend that voice crack didn't happen, okay guys? Um, and just like art and learning art as a general theme for a few of my upcoming videos, I guess. Now, I want to make a few things really clear when I start out here, and that is by saying I am not going to tell you whether or not to go to art school. That is not something that I am qualified to tell you. I don't know you, I don't know your personal situation, and I don't know your learning style. This is a very personal decision, and nobody is going to have a one-size-fits-all answer. Nobody is going to know your situation well enough to know what you personally should do. It's up to you to listen to the words of people who have gone, people who haven't gone, and make an informed choice on your own. Now, that said, um, you know, spoiler, I chose to drop out because it was not a good fit for me. I am still struggling with the crippling student loan debt that comes of going to an art school. Um, and I, I do have lots of feelings about how art schools are run more as businesses than as actual facilitators of education, but that's not really what I'm going to focus on here. Um, this is talking about my experiences and, you know, how I just the very basics of me versus art school, I guess. And then the other thing is that I will not be mentioning the name of the school that I went to. Um, if you don't know, please don't ask. Uh, some of you who've been around for a while or who've talked with me before might know the name of the school that I went to. I'd ask you not to share that. Um, because this is more about my personal experiences and not something that's meant to be a general review or critique of the school or any of the individual teachers that I had. And, you know, some of it, a lot of it was most likely just a clash of personality or a clash of teaching style. And in some cases, just people that I think were probably great people, but maybe shouldn't have been teaching. They're good at their craft, but teaching just might not have been their calling per se. Um, but I also don't want to cross the line into like a super unprofessional realm where I'm saying like, this specific person is a terrible teacher and never ever get them. Or you know, don't go to this school because they're horrible. And like, that's not the reality. There's nuance in this. Um, you know, we're gonna have to start a drinking game for my videos where you take a shot every time I say the word nuance. <laughs> um, and then 
I do plan on talking about some of the more specific and extreme experiences that I had um, that, you know, usually the negative ones, because uh, those are the longer stories in their own separate videos. So if you are here just for the entertainment value of listening to some juicy college drama, uh, you know, you're not going to be completely devoid of that if you stick around. Um, I just won't be doing the whole naming names thing because that is just a professional line that I won't cross. So with the disclaimers out of the way, what was my college experience like anyways? Um, I'm sure some of you have picked up a little bit just from my tone uh, and how I've talked about it and the fact that I didn't finish, that obviously it was a mixed bag. But to start out, I started college at the age of 21 after having about five years eaten up by a terrible relationship that left me with a lot of mental and emotional damage to unpack. Um, and you know, one thing is that maybe jumping into college right after that wasn't a great idea, but it felt like one at the time. Um, I, you know, I'd wanted to go to art school since I was around 11 and, you know, I, the realization sank in that I was not getting a Hogwarts letter or getting chosen to be a dragon rider. Um, and then the other kind of, I guess, mistake that I started out with was that I started in the spring semester. That is the one, like, hard rule, I will say, terrible idea, do not do that. Um, the way the school I attended was set up, and from what I understand, the way that most schools are set up, basically none of the prerequisite courses that you need for your first semester are available in the spring. Um, and then there's gonna not be really any help with you know, like navigating the campus or facilities or anything like that, because everyone assumes you started in the fall. Um, and, you know, I, I chose that because I was just like, I, I want to go as soon as I can. And that was, the, you know, the first semester where there was an opening. Um, and, but things are just not structured in a way that kind of allows for that. So that's like the one hard rule that you can take away from this. If you do choose to go to art school, start in the fall semester do not do the the damage to yourself of starting in the spring semester. It's just the slightly longer wait will be helpful to you in the long run. But to make matters worse, there ended up just being a ton of general complications that kind of hit me specifically. Um, my medical papers were lost because they were handled by paid students, which I'm still not entirely sure the legality of, um, but they managed to separate them from my legal name change papers, which I had changed my name uh, the year before I started college, but all of my medical papers came from before that from a pediatrician, and um, they were turned in together in a folder but they managed to get separated and then my medical information was just sitting on a desk for weeks where anyone could see it um and the school was badgering me claiming that they didn't have my medical papers and that i wasn't going to actually be able to attend classes because of this um and I, I literally walked in and i pointed on the desk and i was like oh that's them right there yes i know that's not the name that i am you know, walking around with on my ID and everything. I turned them in with legal name change papers. You should have those on file. Um, so that was, that was maybe uh, not a great start. Um, and then I was initially placed with a roommate uh, that was on their own, which at first was cool because, you know, usually you share a dorm with four people. I only had to share with one. But nobody bothered to tell me that this person was on their own because they'd previously threatened their last roommate with a knife. Um, yeah, so that's a whole thing. I, there's not much more story to that. They dropped out not long after I got there, honestly. Um, but just kind of in general, I got the impression that the particular counselor that I was paired with didn't necessarily value me in particular or care what I was doing. Um, 
but I, I did know other people who had fine experiences with her, so I'm, I'm not sure if that was, like, us not getting along, if she just got a vibe from me that I wasn't gonna go very far, so she just didn't put as much effort in, I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but that was definitely kind of, it, it didn't help because it made an already confusing situation feel a lot more chaotic and a lot worse. And this counselor actually, like, really pushed me to do 18 credit hour semesters, which, if you don't know how that works, um, 15 credit hours is the standard uh, at that school, and I think kind of generally at places that use credit hours as their structure. Um... And 15 credit hours is already a very full course load. You are taking between four to five classes at that point, and you are usually in class um, for anywhere between seven or eight hours, four days a week, which sounds great compared to high school until you remember that you have triple the workload afterwards, um, and a lot of times the homework in art school is very, very time intensive, um, especially if you're already a relatively slow artist. Um, so doing 18 credit hours means that I was in class for sometimes uh, anywhere from 10 or even 11 hours on those four days a week. And I was just, I did not have enough hours in the day to do homework. And I hadn't even restarted my job at that point because I also worked in college because I am broke. Um, so, you know, I, because of that, I just ended up dropping classes. And because my counselor was, for some reason, never available uh, during my brief periods of free time to see her, uh, I just sort of picked based on which ones stressed me out the most, or which ones had teachers that I wasn't clicking with, and um, in some cases that actually did impact the trajectory of my education, because I just didn't have that guidance on what would be affected. There may or may not be a train in the background. I am very sorry if you can hear that. I live out in the country, and that is just something that we have to live with here. So what I've said so far does sound really bad, and a lot of the time it really felt like it was, too. But I also did have really incredible teachers in some cases who really helped me grow. Um, one taught a class that was basically like the fundamental art concepts that theoretically you should learn in your high school art class, but you definitely don't. Um, and that teacher just did an incredible job of kind of covering things that we were assumed to already know. Uh, because in addition to, you know, theoretically ha having learned that in a regular uh, high school art class, um, a good portion of the student body had already gone to specialized high schools, or at least gotten to take uh, specialized art classes, because the student body was overwhelmingly wealthy. Um, a, a lot of them didn't think they were, but they definitely were very, very wealthy compared to some of us. Um, and, you know, their families could afford to send them to those specialized classes. And so while a lot of students complained about this particular class and this particular teacher and her insistence on teaching us, you know, the basics of value and having an entire project based around what's called simultaneous contrast. Um, and, you know, the, the basics in that way, um, I learned a lot about color and form and especially how to critique and assess artwork. Um, she is kind of responsible for the honest roast critique monster that I ended up becoming. Um, so yeah, these are like skills that I still use when assessing my own artwork and where I need to improve, and I really like mentally call back to a lot of the principles that I learned in that particular class. 
And then one teacher just really restored my faith in myself as an artist when I was just at my lowest and starting to consider dropping out. And you might not expect that from him because he taught us mostly about the business side of art, um, as well as teaching my illustration class. Um, but as far as like the business side goes, you know, so many people in the industry and outside of it just refuse to address that. And if not for him, I would not really understand contracts or licensing even to the extent that I do. Um, you know, I, I definitely learned more about that from him than from the business math teacher who uh, just kind of forced us to sign up for this Redbubble ripoff that he had a personal stake in. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the good teacher in this situation, he just worked with us on like a really individual level and, you know, had a way of trying to push us out of our comfort zones a little at a time um, in a way that really worked well for me. And, you know, he expressed approval of the things that were done well even when, uh, due to health complications, I was struggling to finish pieces and product projects on time. Um, I, I think a lot of how far my understanding of when I'm biting off more than I can chew, and my understanding of my limits, comes from his classes too, because he did really push us uh, as, as hard as he felt he could without breaking us. And the way that he did that worked really well for me. Um, I, I definitely know there were some people in my class who did not appreciate that, and, like, there's some merit to that, but I, I personally really liked the way that he did things. Um, and, you know, it was his advice when I actually did decide to drop out that really made me feel confident in that decision and feel like I wasn't failing for doing that. Because he said to me, you are already selling your art. You've already got the fundamentals down really well. Um, you know, you already have a business that you are running. And if you just remember to push yourself in the right ways, you don't need even to be here. And he was right in the end. You know, I'm doing great, <laughs> actually. Like, I, I really feel like I've grown so much in the few years since I've left college. And I haven't paid, you know, 50k a semester to do so. Um, and then I'm saving some of my worst teacher-specific experiences for either another video individually or uh, to get in a, in a little group, I guess. Um, and one in particular just looks worse and worse the more I look back on the her and... Yeah, so I, I've got some plans for that, but uh, in that murky middle ground of bad and good to finish off my teacher experiences. Um, you know, every art school has a teacher like this, um, who is so deeply frustrating that I ended up doing some pretty incredible things out of sheer spite. Um, he was very traditional, very set in his ways, and he kind of singled out two students and care, he cared about what they did and kind of just ignored everyone else a little bit uh, to the point where I literally passed despite rarely doing the work and there were some days that I was not even marked absent when I didn't even show up. Um, and I just got so frustrated by this that at the last minute for finals I just decided to choose the most difficult subjects I could think of for my piece and ended up uh, actually suddenly getting his attention on my art right at the end and you know it, it did feel pretty good being able to go no I'm good I don't need any help I got this far without it um that was quite the ego boost <laughs> so with that kind of like sampler platter uh you can see kind of that my my college experience was a a mixed bag and, you know, that's without getting into the roommate stuff and the 
social madness inherent in being out of school with other people, especially when you are at least a few years older than a lot of the people that you are, you know, around most of the time. Not to say I was the oldest person there. There were definitely people, like, much older than me or just a little bit older. But the general student body was definitely teenagers fresh out of high school, which created a, a kind of weird dynamic when I had already kind of struggled getting along with people my own age. Um, so that didn't help. Um, and, you know, that's without getting into the fact that I was working during a lot of my time there and that I perhaps foolishly, but with good intentions, took in some kittens that had nowhere else to go. Um, uh, kittens in college do not mix. Do not get a kitten to bring to college. That is my other, like, for sure firm piece of advice. Don't do it. You will never sleep. But despite all of those complications and all of that general life madness that was happening, I did learn and I did grow quite a bit. Um, I just did that learning and growing at a time when I was also being stressed out of my mind and getting, you know, one to two hours of sleep a night if I was lucky. Um, just in general, I personally don't feel that it was a good structure for certain kinds of neurodivergent people like myself. Um, and that's, I mean, a whole can of worms tackling, like, the entire school system, both in and outside of art education, and that is something that I do not have the big brain for. Um, you know, I do know people, and I've met people, uh, since leaving that have had great experiences there, and, you know, the defining point on which end of that scale people fall on seems to be a combination of, you know, outside circumstances, like their existing mental health and, you know, how sturdy of a support network they had, uh, their or their family's income level, uh, as well as, uh, interestingly, specifically what major they were taking. Um, there was definitely, like, a different dynamic and a different level of care put into different majors um, both by the teachers themselves and on a more, um, administrator level, uh, which was definitely interesting to realize and a little frustrating in some cases because you might guess that mine was not one of the ones that was as heavily monitored and looked after. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been out of college for several years now. I'm not going to do the math in my head, um, because I don't want to. But, you know, I for a while there I did really struggle with feeling like a failure for dropping out, despite the words and reassurance of my professor. Um, until I happened on some of Adam Duff's videos. Um, if you don't know him, he is a professional artist and, uh, YouTuber now who does a lot of very in-depth, uh, art talks from a very sincere place. Um, but the video that I found, he was talking about his problems with art education from the point of view of an educator and someone who has actually taught at an art school. Um, it really opened my eyes to the fact that there wasn't something wrong with me for not being able to make it. Um, that the system was what was broken. I was not what was broken. Um, you know, I, I didn't even know until that video that private mentorships were an option that a growing number of professionals are offering. Um, since then, I have really been looking into that because I do think that having someone who is more experienced than me actually, you know, working in depth and helping me to dig into how to improve my skills in a very personalized sort of way, um, without the necess necessity to kind of perform that college asks of you, 
Um, I, I think that could be really good for me, and I do think it's an option to consider if you're thinking about going to art school. Um, because with that, you get to look into the person that you'll be learning from. You get to look into, you know, most often they have some sort of, you know, YouTube channel or, you know, free resources that kind of acts as a, a sample uh, of what being taught by them will be like. And I think that that is immensely beneficial. Um, because at the end of the day, art colleges aren't run by artists. They're run as businesses. Um, so, um, I completely lost my train of thought here. Um, but with that, you know, going to an artist whose interest is in teaching artists instead of going to artists who are being paid by business people to teach artists, um, to do business without actually teaching you about the business side of things, usually. Uh, it just works better for me. Um, because I do sort of feel like I need that outside accountability to kind of push me away from staying in my comfort zone and to um, take chances with my art and to not just get caught up in, oh, well, this is what's selling right now, so that's what I need to keep making because what I'm selling isn't necessarily always what I want to be doing. Um, you know, I, I've got bigger ambitions. And while I don't necessarily have the time or money to do a mentorship right now, um, just because of my work situation and that, um, you know, I have found that listening to videos made by professionals that I want to emulate in some ways, uh, like Adam Duff, who I mentioned earlier. Um, Trent Conwiga is uh, another one that I watch just as much as Adam. Um, it, it helps, but it does still feel hard to actually give myself that time to dedicate to learning when I also have to use art as a business to help me get by on a day-to-day -day level, which could be its own topic all on itself. Um, but uh, all in all, like I said at the beginning, I cannot tell you whether or not art school is the right choice for you. I can only talk about my own experiences and say that while well, I learned a lot and I don't necessarily regret going, although I do regret these student loans that I will be paying off until I am 40, uh, it wasn't for me, and I'm glad that I quit. Um, I would much rather focus on my skills without restrictions, um, and without having to, you know, pile things on myself to a point where I can't handle it, um, and use resources available from teachers and creators that I already trust and I already like instead of playing roulette. Um, and often those resources are free, or at least much more affordable. But I also understand that that's something that doesn't work for everyone. Um, if you're someone who really has to have that structure and really has to have those hard deadlines and needs to learn to work within that very high pressure environment, um, you know, sometimes that is worth it, despite the cost and despite, you know, the playing roulette to get who's teaching you those lessons. Um, either way, I hope that this video has been helpful or just entertaining for those of you who have stayed to the end. Um, please feel free to share your own experiences with education, art-related or otherwise, in the comments. I'm really curious to see how much of this is universal outside of art school or what is specific just to art schools. Um, and of course, if you are someone who's considering art school, maybe share your thoughts and your concerns and we can kind of foster a, a community conversation in the comics. Comics? Comments. Comments. Um, we are not posting comics in the comments.
I mean, I guess do if you want to. But uh, mostly we're talking about colleges in the comments. All right. I have been at this way too long. I have re-recorded this specific section way too many times. We're going to leave it. So with that, thank you to everyone who has stuck around. Uh, if you listened all the way to the end, you are amazing and I adore you. If you didn't, I adore you anyways, even though you're not here to hear this. Um, and it is time to thank my patrons. So I want to say thank you to Holmes, Brooke Dufresne, Chamomalian, Lunathist, Guts and Gaze, Test Frost, Spirit of Stars, Kihiramaru, Arisark, Miles Mentis, Karen Name, Jordan Kirian, Planchell, Tesla Charlatan, and Hello. Um, if you want to hear your name at the end of my videos, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, there are lots of other cool rewards and goodies. If you don't feel like doing that, that's okay. Um, I would still really appreciate a subscribe or a like on the video, all that YouTube stuff that makes the algorithm like me a little bit more. Uh, but until next time, I will see you guys later.